Hello everyone, welcome to Bootstrap Workbench. Today I want to talk about programming the BTEC 25X4 mobile radio using Chirp radio programming software. Uh, the first step that you're going to do is to uh, open your web browser and go to chirp.danplanet.com. I'll provide a link in the uh, details down below. Once you're there, click on the Get It link, and then you'll have several options available. If you're using a Windows system, you can click to download the latest Windows version. If you're using Mac OS X, you can click to download the latest Mac OS X version. And if you're using Linux, you have several options there. Most people use the uh, repositories that are available on their system to be able to uh, get the uh, version of Chirp that they want installed on their system. Since I'm using a Windows system, I'm going to click the link for that. And on the next screen, you'll see a list of files. Uh, almost all the time you're going to want to choose the uh, highlighted uh, file that says Windows Installer in the description field. Uh, if you need to use one of the other ones, you'll, uh, you'll probably know which one you need to use for your application. Uh, sometimes this file does take a while to uh, download on my particular system, so I've already downloaded the file. I'm going to go ahead and double click the file if you receive a user account control prompt, you're going to want to click Yes there. And then click Install on the Chirp Installer Setup. This is going to take just a few moments to install. It's a fairly small installer, so it doesn't take very long at all. It's going to tell you that it's completed above the status bar, so you can go ahead and click Close. Let me minimize all these windows. I'm going to go ahead and do a search. For Chirp, it'll say it's a desktop app on Windows 10, and it, uh, the icon is a uh, serial port, so uh, that's how you'll know uh, that you've uh, found the right one. So now Chirp is open. What I'll do is uh, I'll go to... Uh, actually, I need to pro plug my uh, programming cable in. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to bring up Device Manager and see if I already have any COM ports on the system. I do not. If you do, you'll want to expand the COM ports uh, listing and see what COM port gets assigned when you plug your programming cable in. So I'm going to plug my programming cable in now. And I can see that it's been assigned as USB serial port COM4. So I'll go into my radio menu in Chirp, select download from radio. I want to make sure it's on COM4. Our vendor is BTEC. Our model is UV-25X4. So we'll go ahead and uh, click OK. So the instructions that we're seeing are to turn off the radio, connect the interface cable, turn on the radio, and do the download of the radio data. So I'm going to, I've already turned my radio off. I'm going to power it on now. All right, the radio is up, so I'm going to click OK. It's going to do clone the data from the radio into the Chirp software. Uh, now this is going to be on a new radio, the uh, default code plug that's plugged in, uh, programmed into the radio. And what you want to do uh, is make sure that you download that code plug and then save it somewhere safe. And then what you'll do is using that same code plug, save it to a new file name. Uh, tech working or something onto the end of the portion of the file name before the extension. And then you'll build uh, your new code plug off of that data. Uh, that's going to do several things for you. One, you're going to have a copy of the original code plug from the radio. In case something happens later on, you can get the radio back into stock configuration. All right, we've finished downloading the data. The other thing that it's going to do for us is you have the code plug from the radio and you start building off of that. Um, in that code plug there is some performance information, calibration information that's important to the radio and you want to make sure you have that in the code plug when you start building. So now we are in uh, the uh, screen where we have our memories on the tab here on the left. We also have settings available. So to load memories into uh, this radio to find out, uh, for instance, what repeaters you want to use if you're in an amateur radio application, 
you can click on radio query data source and I like to use repeater book uh, typically I'll do a proximity query I'm located in San Angelo Texas and uh, I usually like to do a 50 mile uh, distance query and I leave it set for bands all with the data that you get back you'll have to pick out the ones that are not compatible with the radio that you have um, the other way to go about it is to do it band by band in this case you would need to do the 2 meter band then come back and do the 1.25 meter band and then come back and do the 70 centimeter band so I like to just get all the information at one time so it's going to come up as a separate tab here at the top called repeater book and we'll just pick out the frequencies that are in our bands of interest highlight those however you want to uh, I click the first one held down shift and click the last one uh, you'll right click and do a copy go back to your initial code plug let's go ahead and save this as a working copy we'll click on the first memory select paste it's going to ask us if we want to overwrite location zero you can either step through each one with a yes like that or you can click all so what it's done now uh, let's see here it's telling us that memory 19 is not compatible with this radio because mode DMR is not supported that's fine uh, similar with mode 20 uh, mode digital voice is not compatible 21 all right so now we have a gap here let's go ahead and resolve that we'll just highlight the gap select delete and shift all memories up all right great so now you can see that we have our uh, output frequency our uh, name which in this case is uh, usually call signs tone mode uh, as to whether it's uh, CTCSS that we're transmitting, uh, whether we're using a CTCSS squelch uh, where we define a tone and our radio won't open squelch, won't open uh, squelch unless we receive that coded tone. Uh, our tones are listed here. We have our uh, duplex offset, whether we're negative or positive, and how far our offset is. Uh, in the two meter band, we're uh, 600 kilohertz. In the 70 centimeter band, we're uh, five megahertz our mode and our power uh, you can define your channels as to whether they're high power or low panel cha low power channels and you can define that on the fly as well so let's go ahead and go over to settings for basic settings uh, there are some interesting options like uh, quad receive or uh, synchronized uh, display that are available so what I'm going to do here uh, I usually set mine for A plus B plus C plus D. That gives you quad receive. Squelch level is adjustable here. It's also adjustable uh, on the fly uh, through the microphone of the radio. I set mine down just a little bit. I'm in uh, an RF quiet environment. Timeout timer. Uh, default is 60 seconds. I usually set mine for 120. Auto power off timer. Uh, you can set the radio so it'll power off after a certain amount of time. That's useful if you're commuting back and forth and you usually know how long you're going to be in a vehicle. In my application, there are times where I'm in the vehicle for four to six hours at a time. So I'm going to leave this set for off for right now. Uh, backlight timer, uh, the same. You can have it uh, turn your backlight off after a uh, defined amount of time. Key beep as to whether or not you're going to... Uh, hear a beep when you press a button on the radio or the microphone DTMF side tone uh, keyboard plus A and I is the default usually just set mine to keyboard uh, scan resume method uh, it can either be set for timeout carrier operated or search for timeout uh, once you're receiving a signal after a uh, predefined amount of time has gone by it will resume scanning carrier operated uh, the way that that works is after the uh, transmission ceases, it will wait a defined amount of time and then resume scanning. Search, in that function, it scans until it receives a signal. 
it stops on the signal, and then it does not resume scanning. That's a way to find um, basically uh, frequencies that are being used in your area, and uh, once the radio stopped, you can record the frequency and then resume scanning. PTT transmit delay uh, is a delay before the uh, radio begins transmitting after you press the PTT. Alarm mode in amateur applications, uh, this is something you're going to want to leave off. You don't want to uh, transmit an alarm tone out uh, over the air. Uh, also, Roger Beep in uh, amateur applications, that's best to just leave that off. Uh, Roger Beep is considered to be uh, bad form on the amateur bands. So, your uh, display modes, uh, you can either have it set for uh, frequency, channel, or name. Uh, what I like to do is turn on channel display sync and set it to AB plus CD. And then I have display mode A set for name, B is set for frequency, C is set for name, and D is set for frequency. What that will do is uh, it brings you down to dual watch, but you'll have the uh, name of the repeater and then the frequency of the repeater on the second line. And the same thing for the third and fourth lines. Language, English, or Chinese. And then you can define your color scheme for your radio. Um, it just depends on your personal preference. These are the defaults. Transmitting status. You can have it show either power or microphone volume. Uh, power will show power out. Mic volume will show... Uh, how much uh, audio that your voice is putting into the mic. A and I length uh, is not really important for amateur uh, applications. Tone burst is configurable. Uh, it's not something that's typically used uh, in my area, so uh, I don't have it configured on anything. Repeater STE, uh, that's squelch tail elimination. Uh, it only really works if both sides have uh, squelch tail elimination capabilities. Uh, whether it's on or not uh, just depends on uh, the equipment that you have available to you uh, repeater-wise. Mic gain is configurable. DTMF gain is configurable. All right, let's see here. For scan mode, uh, I don't really use... Uh, much of this configuration, I do know that the last option here, PONSC, uh, is a power on scan. No matter what uh, mode the radio is in when you turn it off, when it powers on, it will power up in scan mode. Uh, for this particular radio, uh, scan mode is, is pretty slow, um, to tell you the truth. And then also, if you have any 1.25 meter frequencies uh, programmed into your uh, scan list, uh, what it will do is every time it switches to the 1.25 meter band, it will uh, engage a relay. And then when it switches out, it will disengage the relay. And so if you're running scan on this radio, you're eventually going to wear that relay out if you have any uh, 220 frequencies in your scan list. So this is really a radio where you would want to have either just 2 meter and 70 centimeter uh, frequencies in your scan list or just 220 frequencies in your scan list. All right, moving on to advanced settings. You have your power on messages and your static message. This is only configurable from Chirp. I have not found a way to program this uh, using the microphone. What I usually do is I set the static message to my call sign. That way if the radio is stolen, there's at least some indication of... Um, you know, that the radio belongs to me, at least up until the point where uh, somebody reprograms the radio. Other settings, uh, it's not anything that I have uh, configured. Work mode settings, uh, I don't use those in my application. Uh, really, I don't use any of the other settings here. But they are configurable. 5-tone, 2-tone, DTMF. So that's all there. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, save this code plug. I'll close the repeater book screen. Now what I have done is uh, I already have a code plug that I normally keep in this radio. So I'm going to go ahead and open that. Let's see here. I 
I think it's that one there. It is. And really it's the same one that we have, but the colors are configured differently. Ah, there it is. So the colors are configured differently, and I've also added the uh, 2 meter, 70 centimeter, and 1.25 meter call frequencies for uh, nationwide FM into here. I'm just going to th scroll through real quick. Okay, there's nothing else here that I need to change. So, I'm going to go ahead and upload this to the radio. I'll go to radio and then upload to radio. We're still on COM4, so we'll click OK. The radio should be ready. The radio is identified, and now we're cloning the code plug into the radio. Now, much like when we were reading the code plug out of the radio, uh, the display on the radio is going to flicker. And in this case, you'll see right on the screen. This process may take uh, a little bit more time, depending on how much information you have in the code plug. What I'll go ahead and do is uh, I'll edit this portion of the video out, and uh, then we'll wrap everything up afterwards. All right, so we're just finishing up with uh, programming the code plug into the radio. So it'll be done momentarily. Once it's done, the radio will restart. So that's going to be normal to see. All right. And we're back to uh, having the uh, configured code plug in the radio. So to summarize, uh, the important points here are to uh, go to chirp.danplanet.com, download and install Chirp on your computer. Uh, make sure that you have a good quality programming cable. In this case, I bought the FTDI cable directly from BTEC on Amazon. And then that way I know that the cable works. Uh, if you have a, uh, a cheaper cable, a lot of times they have fake prolific chips in there. And uh, it's just a lot of problems to get the, uh, the drivers to work correctly with your system. Um, use the uh, query data source. Uh, I like to use repeater book. And uh, I use the proximity. Uh, options to get uh, nearby repeaters and uh, once you've built your uh, list of frequencies go into your settings and uh, make some strategic changes such as uh, turning off uh, Roger Beep and uh, setting uh, Squelch Tail Eliminate uh, how you need it in your application and change the colors uh, if you want to have a different uh, set of uh, colors on your display and then uh, you can program that code plug uh, into the radio uh, of course, uh, take your original uh, default code plug and save it somewhere safe so that you have it uh, later on if you need to reset the radio back to factory. Uh, that's pretty much going to cover it. Uh, like I said, I'll put a link to uh, the Chirp page in the details down below. Uh, if anybody has any questions or comments, uh, leave them down below in the comment section. And um, we'll have some more videos out soon. So. Uh, Stay tuned. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. I hope that you have found this video informative, and I hope that you have a great day. Thanks.